Illinois today. Carter wins again, and a difference of opinion in Iran. Those stories and more coming up from News Center 13. Join Steve Nichols, Christy Callahan, and Tony Powers next for News Center 13. Here's Pat Valentine for Anderson Erickson Dairy with some creative cooking tips for you. If you're looking for ways to add new life to your meals without a lot of extra work, AE Sour Cream Dips can help. Add a new flavor twist to scrambled eggs or omelets with toasted onion sour cream dip. Or try AE Garlic Dip atop vegetables, tacos, or burritos. Or smother your favorite sandwich with AE Blue Cheese. Creative cooking can be easy when you use a dash of imagination and AE Sour Cream Dips. If you want to get baby pigs off to a better start, you've got to make them a better feed. Simply fortify grain and natural protein with a Vigortone pre-starter premix. You'll get them on feed faster for less money than a store-bought pre-starter. Dial toll-free. Your Vigortone dealer has all the details. Give them a call. We help you make a better feed. Des Moines is where I was born. Now it's what I write about. It's where I live and where you live. Let's enjoy Shotwell City together. In the Des Moines Tribune, make the most of it. This is News Center 13. Good evening, I'm Steve Nichols. A near drowning at a local motel this afternoon has left a five-year-old Des Moines boy in serious condition and has made another young man a hero. 13's Trina Creighton reports. The near drowning of five-year-old Kyle Kelly happened here at Howard Johnson's motel on Merle Hay Row. Motel officials say young Kelly was here with his parents, Joe and Mary Kelly, taking part in the motel's Sunday Family Swim Club. There is no lifeguard on duty, and management has a sign stating that fact. According to witnesses, the Kellys had left Kyle with a friend for a short while. Their friend says that she had just finished talking with Kyle, turned around, and he was gone. Witnesses guess that the young boy may have slipped into the pool. But it was a lucky day for the youngster, because the maintenance man on duty, 16-year-old Steve Henriksen, was around. Henriksen says all day long, while walking in and out of the pool, he kept thinking what he'd do if someone was drowning. And much to his surprise, he found out. I started walking around the pool and saw sand in the bottom. And I went around on the other side and I saw what I thought was a swimming trunks and it was. And I just stood there for a minute because I didn't know what to do. And I just took off my shoes and jumped in and got him, brought him up to the top. And I think some lady picked him up because I don't even remember putting him outside the pool or even me getting out of the pool. Young Kelly was rushed to Northwest Hospital, then transferred to the intensive care unit at Blank Children's Hospital, where he's listed in critical condition. And that's also where we found Henriksen at the hospital, nervous, concerned, and waiting to find out if young Kelly is going to make it. Trina Creighton, New Center 13. An 18-year-old Corridan woman has become the state's second reported traffic victim this weekend. Rhonda Sue Taylor was killed early this morning when her vehicle left the roadway in Wayne County. Police say they'll ask that charges be filed against a Des Moines school bus driver. The driver, 49-year-old Shirley Riggan, drove her bus into a low bridge Friday afternoon, sending herself and four children to the hospital. Officials say Riggan should be charged with disregarding a warning sign. They say the bus first hit a warning sign that was 7 feet 3 inches high before hitting the eight foot three inch bridge. Riggan is in satisfactory condition at Mercy Hospital. All but one of the students have been sent home. Ten-year-old Gary Sorensen, the other student, is in good condition now at Lutheran Hospital. There's not much left of a Marshalltown business today. A fire last night gutted the Trade Home Shoe Store in the downtown area of Marshalltown. The contents of the store were destroyed and the roof at the rear of the building caved in. Two adjoining businesses, Osco Drug and Kresge's Department Store, sustained smoke damage. The store was closed at the time and there were no injuries. Officials say they don't have a dollar amount of the damage and they'll begin looking for the cause of the fire tomorrow. The Americans in Iran have now been held hostage for 100 days with no real indications when their ordeal may end. But a group of Americans on a private peace mission went to the embassy today, and that has prompted the latest tensions between the militants and Iran's new president, Badi Sadr. Here's a report. The 49 Americans who arrived five days ago in Tehran were driven inside the U.S. embassy compound today. There was no fanfare and only a few journalists. 
Neither the Americans nor the militants who invited them would say if the group planned to meet with the hostages. Exactly what the Americans are trying to do has never been clear. What is clear is that the group's presence angers Iran's new president, Bani Sadr. Speaking to the Revolutionary Council today, he stepped up his criticism of those holding the embassy, saying they should have arranged the American visit through the foreign ministry. Bani Sadr's speech was heard by Muslim observers from several countries, invited to watch the workings of the Revolutionary Council. Tonight, fireworks displays marked a new national holiday in Iran. Tomorrow is the first anniversary of the Battle of Tehran, which toppled the Shah's regime. Zion Wildman, NBC News. According to a prominent journalist from India, resistance by rebels in Afghanistan against the invasion of Soviet troops has all but crumbled in most of Afghanistan. The rebels are said to control only two provinces now, one bordering China, the other next to Pakistan. An Aeroflot jetliner from the Soviet Union landed at Kennedy Airport today, sat there for two hours, then took off for Washington, D.C. The jet landed in violation of an agreement not to use Kennedy because ground crews refused to work on Aeroflot aircraft. The plane's passengers included 122 athletes on their way to the Winter Olympics at Lake Placid, New York. None of the passengers got off the plane while it was at Kennedy. Members of the International Olympic Committee today said they were shocked by comments made by Secretary of State Vance last night. In a welcoming address to the committee in Lake Placid, Vance called for the cancellation of the Summer Olympics in Moscow. Meanwhile, a leading sports official in West Germany has echoed that government's call to pull out of the Summer Games. It's thought that many other European nations are waiting to follow West Germany's lead. Coming up, President Carter defeats uh, Senator Kennedy in the Maine caucuses and a unique art show here in Des Moines. That and more when New Center 13 returns. Who keeps plumbers plumbing in Nebraska? Who keeps paper hangers hanging in St. Paul? Who sells candy bars and motor cars and movie stars and mason jars? Bell System Yellow Pages, we sure do it all. Who keeps decorators busy up in Fargo, huh? Who keeps travel agents moving folks around? Who sells pickup trucks in Aberdeen and hockey bucks in Muscatine? The Bell System Yellow Pages, and we mean business in your town. When the north wind is wailing and the ice storms are freezing up the highways, Champlain Trans Season performs superbly, even at 30 below. When it's too hot for lizards and your engine is running at 260 degrees, Trans Season protects superbly. And always, Trans Season gives long mileage performance, up to 15,000 miles between changes. Great going with Champlain. The roses are red, and they're made for lovers. Ice cream valentines in 31 lovers. Teachers in Chicago are voting tonight to see if school will be held tomorrow after a two-week shutdown. The teachers were protesting a layoff of nearly 700 teachers. About half of those people would get to keep their jobs under a tentative agreement hammered out by negotiators in a 15-hour session. The executive director of Iowa's largest teachers organization says teachers should not be afraid to use their power to improve education. Beverly Wolkoff made her comments yesterday before the annual convention of the Iowa State Education Association. She says teachers should use their power in politics and in negotiations. The YWCA was the scene of a cultural art show today. 13's Christy Callahan reports. Today's display was a colorful one with the Black Gospel Choir from Grinnell singing in the background, the Third World Art Expedition was held at the YWCA. Third World means people of color, and today blacks and Indians joined in the eighth annual art show. Producer Pat Miller says it's unique for third world artists to display their work. A lot of your black artists or people of color tend to do their artwork that deals with their own culture. And because uh, most of the galleries in town are white owned galleries, they cater to white. 20 artists from around the Midwest put their creations on display with their contributions ranging from Indian jewelry to African paintings. They taught me how to beat when I was real small. When I seen most of them, like at powwows and stuff like that, and 
my, my uh, mother taught me how to make most of them. I get involved with uh, geometric shapes. Uh, I do a lot of cubism, uh, basic shapes, squares, rectangles. Uh, I live in West Africa and I taught over there. And a lot of my images and ideas uh, stem from uh, the time. Christy Callahan reporting, New Center 13. President Carter has won round two in the fight for the Democratic presidential nomination. He defeated Senator Ted Kennedy in the Maine caucuses today. Kennedy had once said he needed to win in Maine to stay in the race, but he now says he's doing better than expected, and that's good enough. The Republicans in Maine started caucusing last month and will continue to hold scattered meetings through next month. So far, George Bush has a 10% lead over expected leader Ronald Reagan. A set of five was delivered last night in Chicago. 27-year-old Patricia Moeller gave birth to quintuplets, four boys and one girl. The Chicago woman had been taking fertility drugs, and fortunately, she and her husband had just moved into a larger house. The new arrivals were nine weeks premature, but are in stable condition in the special care nursery of a hospital. They've been named Alan, Nicholas, Mark, David, and Elizabeth. It took five kids two days to build an igloo out of the most recent snow to arrive in this area. The structure sits in Nick Morasco's yard at 1015 Thornton. The kids strayed from the traditional Eskimo techniques of igloo construction. Rather than shaping blocks of ice, they simply piled some snow up and dug out the middle of the pile. And of course, how long that igloo sticks around will depend on what we have in the weather. Well, it doesn't look like the igloo's going to melt very soon because we're going to continue to have some chilly weather. I'll tell you all about it right after this. Farmers have been boosting corn yields with DeKalb hybrids since the days of horse-drawn planters. Today's innovative farmers continue to depend on research companies like DeKalb. That's why they start their high-yield corn program with XL55A. Yield is the best description. Add fast dry-down of quality grain on healthy plants, and you have a yield-packed hybrid. See your participating Iowa Southern Minnesota DeKalb dealer and save during DeKalb's cash and carry days, February 13th through the 15th. Broad leaves, look out. Here comes the first dry, flowable herbicide for soybeans. New Lexone DF. It handles easy, but hits broad leaves hard. Make no mistake, it's not powder. It's not liquid. Lexone DF is dry, flowable. Thousands of bead-like granules mix easily. It empties completely, pours out everything you pay for. New Lexone DF, the easier handling herbicide for soybeans. It's that time of day when you can say, come on and head for the mountains. For the taste is smooth and waiting for you. Here's to a beer brewed slow, cold, and natural for a taste as smooth as its name. For head for push beer. Nice to have you with us this evening. It's snowing tonight in North Dakota, Minnesota, and Michigan. Most of that snow is light, but temperatures are cold up there because winds up north have been gusting to 40 miles per hour. It's this low pressure and this cold front that's setting off the light snow, and the National Weather Service says that we could get some very light flurries tonight as this band of cloudiness kind of moves on into the state. But if we get any at all, it will be very light. In fact, in Mason City, they did report a few light snow flurries within the past hour. But in the meantime, we're expecting this low pressure to move out to the east. And as it does, it will take all those snow flurries with it. And then by Tuesday, we're expecting some high pressure to move down in from Canada. And as it does, it'll be giving us some clear skies and cooler temperatures. In the meantime, on the satellite map tonight, we can see it's mostly clear around the nation. They had a little bit of rain down in Florida today and a little bit of light flurry reported up near the New York area, but other than that, it was mostly clear around the nation with mild temperatures. On the state map tonight, temperatures are in the teens, as you can see. We've got a little bit of light snow reported near Waterloo. They've got a reading of 21 degrees over in Mason City. They've got 15 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Fort Dodge is reporting 18 degrees and cloudy skies. Sioux City, more clouds over that way. They've got 19 degrees. Down in Lamona, it's all clear with 22 degrees. The Tomo is reporting 22 degrees. And the warmest spot around the state tonight is right here in the Des Moines area. We're currently in Des Moines. We've got 24 degrees and partly cloudy skies. The winds are out of the southwest at 12 miles an hour. And the barometric pressure is falling at 29.87 inches. The relative humidity, 63%. And we've had a trace of precipitation. 
A high for today was 30. That low was 8 degrees. The record high for this date, 63, set in 1977. The record low, 20 below zero, set in 1885. And it looks like those guys are having a good time in their igloo. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 715. Sunset tomorrow evening, 543. And the forecast for tonight, cloudy with a chance of snow flurries. That's about a 20% chance. We're expecting a low around 10 degrees. And then tomorrow, partly cloudy again, a high in the low 20s. That snow will be ending. And then tomorrow night, partly cloudy again, but low between 5 and 10 degrees. And the extended outlook for Tuesday, variable cloudiness, a high in the mid-20s. And then by Wednesday, we'll have all clear skies. And temperatures will get just a little bit colder. Thank you very much. And the igloo will stay. The igloo will stay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Children and drugs, a look at that problem next from New Center 13. On the farm today, keeping detailed records is vital to good management. Good records not only help you plan improvements, they can help you pay for them. They can speed up the loan process, too, when you're borrowing from the Federal Land Bank. Land Bank loans feature the advantages of long terms, low payments, and no prepayment penalty. To make your next loan easier to manage, remember, good records and your Land Bank Association can help. For more information about land bank loans, stop by the land bank office in your area. The 1980 Buick LeSabre. From the outside, LeSabre represents today's aerodynamic styling at its best. Inside, LeSabre's roomy, rich interior means new comfort, convenience, and luxury for you and your passengers. LeSabre 1980. Your full-size car requirements have never been so elegantly met. Drive one soon at your nearby Central Iowa Buick dealer. 13 presents Sunday Cinema, every Sunday night at 10.30. This Sunday, Peter Sellers and Goldie Hawn star in the comedy, There's a Girl in My Suit. Ah! It's off. Me bloody head's come off. I'm blind. I'm blind. Robert, what happened? Are You'll you... enjoy Sunday Cinema at 10.30 p.m. here on 13. Republican presidential candidate and Senate Minority Leader Howard Baker says a special panel should be formed to investigate the FBI's abscam investigation. That's the operation that allegedly bribed several members of Congress. Baker also says those bribery allegations should be looked into by Congress. The governor of Louisiana is among those subpoenaed to appear before a federal grand jury looking into another FBI undercover operation. This one involves insurance kickbacks. The FBI says not everyone appearing before the the grand jury is a target of the investigation, but sources report the lieutenant governor and a public service commission chairman of Louisiana may have accepted kickbacks. Children and drugs is a concern of many modern parents, and at least one man who works with the problem says kids are learning a lot at a young age. Gerald Harrington has this report. 10, 12, and 14, that the way to cope is to get high. And that is a lie. And we've got to give our kids a chance to grow up and that means to give them a chance to grow up drug-free. He is Bob Kramer, Harvard graduate, former drug user, and now coordinator of the drug abuse program in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. Almost every night, he talks to parents and grandparents. He warns them that kids as young as 11 may be using drugs. Recently, Kramer held a drug workshop for 60 elementary school children and their parents. He learned the parents thought aspirin, Tylenol, and anison were the only drugs the kids knew about. But in talking to the kids, Kramer found out they knew much more. I had got 22 street names for uppers and downers. They started off with black beauties, red devils, yellow jackets, third, fourth, and fifth grade kids. Eight names for PCP, fencyclidine. Kramer says kids get their street drug education from older kids, movies, television, and places like this. The Freedom Factory is a drug paraphernalia shop, commonly called a head shop. Here, drug users can buy an assortment of marijuana and hashish pipes, paper to roll marijuana, magazines, and even comic books describing drugs and how to use them, all sold legally. There is no age restriction, but most owners say they don't sell to anyone under 18. However, at the Freedom Factory, anyone can come in and play the pinball machines. They can watch what goes on at the sales counter. Kramer tells parents they should band together to fight these problems. He says trying to do it alone doesn't work. But instead, if you're a group of parents whose kids hang out together, what you can do instead of saying stay home, 
is that you can pl plan a positive drug-free alternative that all your kids who do play together can take part in. Kramer says if this is not done, the kids are vulnerable to peer pressure to start using drugs, leading to the time they can't get along without them. We have a generation of kids who are learning to cope by copping out, who are learning at age 10, 12, and 14 how to blow away their troubles in a cloud of smoke. Gerald Harrington, NBC News. The Grandview Vikings lose a thriller. Tony Powers will have the highlights of that and more next from New Center 13 Sports. After a whole day of rafting, I find all these guys got to drink is light beer. Have you ever tasted light beer? This is Coors Light. The surprising taste of Coors Light. Hey, this isn't bad at all. Comes from pure Rocky Mountain spring water and high country barley. This is darn good. And a way of brewing that squeezes a lot of the calories out but leaves all the taste in. Guys, I'm surprised. Oh, I told you, man. Coors Light, the surprise is how good it tastes. Know what I love about winter? Ethan Allen's winter sale. Come on, it's happening now. My gallery's a winter wonderland of furniture. What a collection and what savings on things to spruce up my living room, warm up my bedroom, cheer up every room in my house. Hurry over to Ethan Allen's winter sale. Fine furniture and fantastic savings. Hurry to Carriage House and save 10 to 20% on a magnificent selection of Ethan Allen furniture throughout the store. Carriage House, 7700 Hickman Road. If your bed is too lumpy, too small, or too soft, you don't have a Stearns & Foster. But Brandeis does, and Monday only during the Brandeis Bedding Blitz, any size Stearns & Foster firm mattress or box spring is just $79 each piece. Twin, full, queen, or king, each just $79. Extra firm $99, super firm $119. Free delivery within 100 miles with purchase of set. Sleep tight, not uptight. Get a Stearns & Foster at Super Savings Monday only at the Brandeis Bedding Blitz. Harvest time. You remember last year's harvest? That's when you got what you earned. That's when you got what you paid for. Harvest time and your corn did fine because you had a plan. You're a Furidan man. You're a Furidan You're a Furidan man because it's the only soil insecticide that stops rootworms, nematodes, corn borers, and three other pests. Furidan man because you know it's best because it saves more corn because it stops more pests. You're a Furidan man. Furidan man. Did you get to go to another good game today? I tell you, I even got goosebumps in this one because it, it was uh, hairy scary right down to the uh, final uh, last tense moments. Hi, everybody. Well, a real spine tingler today at the Grandview Gym is a packed house. Watch 13th ranked Briarcliff and All-American Rolando Frazier squeak by the Grandview Vikings in an 87-83 thriller. 13's Leroy o uh, Owens has some action highlights. If you like fast-paced basketball like the pros, you should have been at the Grandview Gym today. Both teams were running and gunning from the start. Here, Briarcliff Fort, Rolando Frazier of Panama slams one through for two of his 12 first half points. Teammate Mitch McAllister also scores here with the sensational pirouette layup. Grandview with hot shooting of Reuben Trimble led by three until the Chargers took a 19-18 lead and expanded it to 40-32 at the half. The second half was almost a runaway for the Chargers as they took their biggest lead of the game, 44-32, but the Vikings didn't let up as they cut that lead to three going into the final minute of the game. Then behind 84-83, Grandview went for the last shot, but Dwight Carter misses. Mitch McAllister gets the ball and is fouled, and then with just 11 ticks on the clock, McAllister hits two free throws to ice the victory for Briar Clef. McAllister ended the game with 32 points. Rolando Frazier scored 21. That's 15 below his average. Ruben Trimble led all scores in the game for Grandview with 34. This is Leroy Owens, New Center 13, Sports. Well, another upset in college basketball today. Marquette's Oliver Lee hit a jumper with 46 seconds left, then added a free throw with 22 seconds left to lift the Warriors to an 80-77 win over 12th-ranked Duke. Here's how it looked. Marquette enjoyed leads as high as 19 points with point guard Sam Worthen providing the leadership. Worthen scored 15 points and converted this brilliant feed to 21-point scorer Robert Bird that gave Marquette a 71-62 lead. Duke All-America center Mike Jeminski was held scoreless until 13 minutes remained. He came alive with 17. Gene Banks with 24 points converted this alley-oop and Duke trailed 75-73. Then Duke pressed and Vince Taylor tied it after the steal at 75. Marquette went to Oliver Lee, who hit on the turnaround with 50 seconds left to put Marquette up 77 to 75. With 11 seconds remaining, Taylor cut the margin to a point, and Duke still had a chance to win it. 
They thought it was theirs when Bob Bender stole the ball, but the officials called a jump ball. Artie Green won the tip, and Michael Wilson sewed up the 80 to 77 victory with a layup as Marquette ran its record to 13 and seven with chances increasing for a tournament bid. Jeff Davis, NBC News. Well, Andy Bean held off Lee Trevino and Ed Snead today to win the Hawaiian Open Golf Tournament with a record score of 22 under par 266. Bean won it with birdies in the final two holes. This one a long one. Trevino finished three back at 269. Snead wound up at 271. Well, Sweden's Bjorn Borg took the $150,000 first prize today by winning the Grand Slam of Tennis in Boca, West Florida. Borg defeated Vitas Gerolitis in three sets, 6-1, 5-7, and 6-1. It was Borg's 16th straight win over the American Gerolitis. Well, the U.S.'s Eric Hyden won an unprecedented fourth straight men's title to capture the World Sprint Speed Skating Championships today here in Milwaukee. Hyden won both the 500 and 1,000 meters and is America's top medal hope at the upcoming Winter Olympics, which opens this week in Lake Placid. Hyden could win as many as five gold medals. East Germany's Karen Enke was a surprise winner in the women's division, finishing ahead of Americans Leigh Pulis Mueller and American Beth Hyden. Well, two Central Iowa runners fared very well today at the Mardi Gras Marathon in New Orleans. Des Moines' Bob Becker qualified for the Olympic trials with a blistering time of two minutes, uh, two hours rather, five minutes and three seconds, the second fastest time ever recorded by an Iowan in a marathon. And Pat McGuire of Ames also qualified for the trials with a time of 2.18.5. Malaysia has joined the United States and other nations in choosing to skip the Summer Olympic Games in Moscow. The president of the Malaysian Olympic Council said the country would not take part in the games as a protest of Soviet actions in Afghanistan. American swimmer Cynthia Woodhead set a world record today in the women's 100 meter freestyle in Paris. The 16 year old was clocked in 54 and 8,800 seconds, shaving two hundredths of a second off the uh, old world mark. Yesterday, Woodhead set a world mark in the 200 meter medley. And uh, I tell you, that uh, is really moving when you uh, swim that fast. And I uh, apologize for saying Bob Becker ran that fast in the uh, marathon. I said uh, two minutes. I That'd mean, be you, uh, quite a marathon, wouldn't imagine it? Imagine <laughs> running 26 miles in uh, that time, two hours and five minutes. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to run even a it takes me that lot. long to walk downtown. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tony. An unusual job for a hog. That and more coming up from News Center 13. Funks, the world yield leader, brings you G4323, the money core. Bread to deliver truck yields for your money. Funks G4323, genetically engineered to dry down fast, to save you money at the dryer, conserve precious energy, and put more money in your pocket. G4323, crack the money core. It's like money in a bag. Funks G4323.